Hello, faithful listeners. My name's Clay Thompson, and I'll be your guide once again in the fiction room. Today's prompt is brought to us from username Ashitar. You are a non-famous muggle biologist that keeps discovering magical creatures, and right before you announce your discoveries, get your memory erased by the Ministry of Magic. Then your daughter gets her letter from Hogwarts, and you learn you're famous in the magical world. As always, I hope you enjoy hearing these stories as much as I enjoy reading them. But without further ado, let's begin with our first story, written by Ecstatic and Insatiate. Professor Theodore Waxburn had worked in Oxford's biology program for 15 years, but wasn't quite able to show that he had been doing much of anything. He remembered working. He had years and years of scribbled notes in his file folders that could prove it but his major papers seemed to come in spurts. He could only hunt down four publications in his 15 years of research. Inexplicable! Inconceivable! Surely he had written more than four papers! Surely something had slipped his mind, slipped through the cracks! At the moment, Theodore Waxburn was tearing his home office apart, trying to find evidence to bring to his departmental meeting to show he was an active and useful member of the team. He whispered dark curses under his breath and began thumbing through his filing cabinets, only to find the pages blank or blacked out. Jesus Christ in a bloody handbasket, Theodore muttered to himself. Daddy? Theodore whipped around to see his red-cheeked daughter, Sophie, and hoped she had not heard that. Yes, darling? Is everything quite all right? Oh, uh, yes, uh, d- don't, don't worry. It's, uh, it's a work uh, problem. He tried to palm the frustration out of his eyes, went over to his daughter, and hunkered down in front of her. He wondered what time it was, if he had forgotten to start cooking dinner again. What is it, my little pumpkin? I got a letter. Sophie held it out to him, shyly. Theodore plucked the envelope out of her fingers. It was a fine, thick vellum, and bore the words, Miss S. Waxburn, the second floor, and then their address in precise green handwriting. It reminded Theodore of his father's old fountain pen. He tore into the envelope, found no knives or funny powder, and so offered it to Sophie. Did you and one of your friends decide to be pen pals? He asked, distractedly, turning back to his ruined note collection. He tried to remember when he did that, or in God's name why he would ever do that. No. For a moment the room was quiet, as Sophie read, and Theodore rummaged. Daddy? Yes, darling? This one is for you. Theodore took the piece of paper Sophie offered him without quite looking at it. She flounced out of the room and was gone several minutes before Theodore paused his searching to look at the paper. In the same exacting hand, the letter read, Dear Mr. Theodore Waxburn, You do not remember it, but you have dedicated most of your career to the discovery and observation of magical creatures. Now that Sophie has been accepted into Hogwarts, I feel the freedom to disclose to you the truth of your life. Your memories, notes, and pertinent publications have been destroyed for the safekeeping of our Wizarding Society, from its oldest to its youngest members. We have found in the past that we cannot trust the non-magical world to maintain the integrity and agency of our magical creatures, human or otherwise. In their greed to understand, muggles tend to destroy, change, and consume. Please do not take this observation personally. I apologize for the professional inconvenience imposed upon you by the demands of our society. You must understand that for the safety of all of our citizens, we must maintain absolute secrecy 
and conceal the magic world from humans in its totality. If it is of any consolation, your findings have been recorded in the Waxburn's Guide to Magical Creatures, a Muggle reader. Your work has allowed more wizards to realize that the only thing separating wizards from muggles is not intellect or ability, but merely the knowledge of the small magic hiding all around us. Please, find a copy enclosed. Though do keep it secret, I am committing a not-so-minor crime by sharing it with you. Yours sincerely, Professor Albus Dumbledore, Headmaster. Theodore read it over and over again, scrambling for some way to explain this. Arkham's Razor, this was a joke. This was a project from Sophie's school. This was a gift in one of her books or something. Theodore Waxburn poked his head into the kitchen, where his daughter was putting on a kettle for some tea. Sophie, darling, he said. What's this? It's your letter. I got one too. Sophie offered him her letter, grinning delightedly. I get to be a real witch! There's no such thing as a real witch, Theodore chided her, skimming her letter, paling. The same handwriting, same paper. We are pleased to inform you that you have a place at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Oh, and the owl has a package for you outside. The owl? Yes, the one who brought the letters, Sophie said, like it should be rather self-explanatory. It's your package. I can't give it to anyone but you. Theodore yanked open the door to the back garden to find a huge barn owl sitting on his bird feeder with a paper-covered parcel resting beneath its talons. He crept over to it, slowly, trying not to think about those talons on his head. Or arms. Or face. Hi, birdie, he said lamely. You're very big, aren't you? The owl fixed him with a bright-eyed, eviscerating look, as if mocking him for not knowing how to speak to it, and then spread its enormous wings and took to the sky. The packaging on the book had the same clear, crisp, green handwriting, smudged only a little by the bird's feet. Theodore unwrapped it with shaking hands and stared at the ebony cover for several long loving seconds. Despite the impossibility of it all, there it was. Waxburn's Guide to Magical Creatures. A Muggle Reader. A book. A real book. With his name on it. Theodore grinned like a child at Christmas. Perhaps these fifteen years had not been such a waste after all. <laughs> after all, he had always wanted to publish a book. I was really excited for this one because I saw the name Ecstatic and Insatiate, and every single time I see their name pop up, the stories they write are always good. Just indescribably good. I can't even describe how much I love this. Just, wow. Very nice job. Very in line with the Harry Potter world and lore. And, well, that's all I can say without gushing. So, well done. Very well done. And now, dear listeners, we must unfortunately bid you farewell once again. Thank you all so much for tuning into The Fiction Room. If you enjoyed today's stories, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. It would very much help us. And wherever you are in the world right now, be safe, be well, and we'll see all of you next time. <laughs>